Hey Graham, uh, my name's Mike. I run a company called Feel Good Grapes and our Eleanor from Sandlam has asked us to send you uh, a little box of wine. Um, so what we decided to do is we sent the same wines that we had on a very recent Zoom tasting with Ellie and her team. And I thought for you to get a little bit more out of them maybe, then I, I could just do a little video uh, to explain very, very briefly about the wines. Um, and as I said, if you've got any questions or anything like that at the end of it, uh, you can get in touch directly with me at mike at feelgoodgrapes.com or chat chat to Ellie as well. I know you you guys are in contact. So um, what we'll start with, we'll just crack on with the wines. So the first wine you've got in your box is the 40 Hall Bacchus. So it's 2018. Now this is from the grapes from the only commercial vineyard in Greater London. So it's uh, very close to a place called Enfield. Um, and basically this is a social project. So the whole idea of the, the vineyard was actually set up to support the community, uh, people struggling with mental health, people struggling with other confidence issues, um, and basically to give them sort of ecotherapy, to give them that confidence to go back out into the world uh, whilst learning skills at the same time. Uh, what they do then with the grapes, once they've been harvested, they then get, send the grapes down to a guy called Tim Davenport down in Sussex who makes a fantastic, uh, fantastic wine out of them. So um, the other thing is also is obviously the, the actual grape itself, Bacchus, and I'm not sure whether you'll have tried much of that in the past before. Uh, Bacchus is originally a German grape, but uh, it kind of struggled a little bit in Germany to actually get enough acidity, uh, which hasn't been a problem in the, uh, on, in the British climate with the British soils. So it's kind of our, the English and Welsh wines, great sort of white, dry white hope really. Uh, obviously, we're very now becoming world famous for our sparkling wines, but the dry whites, Bacchus is really kind of leading the way there. Um, so I think um, I think I think kind of more like sunny afternoons and aperitivo, that kind of thing. It is fresh, refreshing kind of wine. Uh, so have it nice and chilled, maybe sort of seven, eight degrees, something like that. Give it a try, see how you feel. Uh, the next wine is the Nobody's Perfect. Oh keep going the wrong way oh it's really hard to do it in reverse anyway uh the nobody's perfect 2018 uh from entre de mer in bordeaux now this has been made by a friend of mine called dawn jones cooper who was and still is actually a hairdresser so she was for about uh, it was about 20 years of hairdressing uh and her and her husband were trying to find a place to moor their um their houseboat one of the old dunkirk flotilla that they they'd renovated and uh, they found this place in Entre de Mer and decided, well, we might as well buy the, because the, it had a vineyard attached to it. So they decided to buy that as well. Um, and so Dawn took herself off to winemaking school and uh, 2013 was her first vintage. Uh, she won uh, awards at the Decanter World Wine Awards in 2000 and before the 2013 vintage, her first ever. And it's kind of gone from strength to strength there. Um, she makes her wines in the biodynamic, uh, or she, she tends the vineyards and using biodynamic principles. Um, and I think it's that that she really credits for the fact that her grapes get this some sort of extra ripeness that other places in that area just don't get. Um, so instead of you kind of what you typically think about Sauvignon Blanc, especially from Bordeaux, where you're thinking kind of, all right, it'll just be kind of straightforward sort of green fruits and sort of quite hard, not harsh citrus, but you know, uh, this is much more kind of stone fruit, even tropical fruit, and you kind of in the citrus world, you're getting more sort of less yellow grapefruit, you get kind of pink grapefruit, which I know it doesn't sound like a massive distinction, but it just goes to show the kind of extra ripeness that she's getting from these areas. And it's a really, really distinct wine from Bordeaux. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I, I just, I think it's a wonderful wine. It's got a cracking long, lovely balanced fruit driven finish. Um, so I really, really hope you enjoy that one too. And then the last one is the, I can just put it straight forward. No, I got it wrong again. Anyway, right, there you go. Right, is the beautiful Malbec um, from Vista Flores in Mendoza in Argentina. Now, this is made by a company called M-A-A-L, and that stands for Made as Alfredo Likes. Alfredo Merlo, who's the winemaker, uh, he spent a lot of time kind of in different countries learning his winemaking trade, and one of them being, uh, he was up in Napa in California. And he noticed that a lot of people were going really heavy into sort of uh, going for those big fat reds and plenty of oak in there as well, really spicy kind of sort of coconut and vanilla kind of flavors. And one of the big reasons people did that is that um, 
that's what American critics liked. And American critics really did make do for for a long time used to make or break a wine. So you can't really criticize the winemakers for doing that because look, you know, it made good business sense. Um, Alfredo, however, when he came back to Mendoza, I think he realized what great Malbec they were making out there. Fantastic kind of, uh, fantastic sunshine to get out there. So you get fantastic ripe Malbec. And uh, it was such a shame that ev a lot of his contemporaries were also doing exactly the same thing because they were chasing the critic score as well. So what he decided to do is he, he just wanted to show you the fruit. So no oak at all in this one at all, just pure fruit. You get those lovely kind of sort of dark fruits of the forest kind of flavors, but also that lift of violet flower, which is kind of very, very indicative of Malbec, makes it a fantastic wine to have. Uh, well, we're pretty much, with a heck of a lot of food actually, but I mean, I would say that's a perfect sort of summer barbecue wine, but also uh, you can basically do the entire range, anything from game to red meat, um, sort of, you know, fatter sort of fish dishes even on that one as well. So. Um, I think that's a it's a cracking Malbec. It's slightly different than a lot of Argentinian Malbecs you'll have tried, and um, yeah, again a lovely, lovely balanced finish, which is a kind of I, I just think indicative of uh, of a really well made wine. Um, so yeah, as I said earlier, if you've got any other questions at all, you just get in touch with me. Uh, that was Mike at feelgoodgrapes.com, and also or just give Ellie a shout and she can she can pass on your comments and your questions and I can get them answered for you. But I hope you enjoy the wines and I uh, hope to see you soon. Take care.